all the different variations for how this claims process has been executed with the most commonly followed here to the left. So it's essentially a frequency distribution and it's set up right now sorted by the number of timelines which have executed one sequence of steps versus another. All right, so this goes even a step further than that schema in that it's showing you all the different process behaviors and you can even view this from a schema perspective. All right, so I've got the ability to look at my different schemas broken out here but let me just explain to you what you've got on screen. Along the top, you've got the number of claims that have executed one series of steps versus another relative to the events that are listed here on the left. So you can clearly pick out here, or, or let's, let's just kind of s s level set. 5.4 roughly percent of our claims take this step, this set of steps. First notice of loss, coverage confirmation, claim setup, so on and so forth. All right, until the claim is closed out. That's 1,704 claims. As I scroll this to the right, you see all the different variations on that, where you're skipping steps, going backwards to do things, maybe iteratively doing things or bouncing back and forth in certain stages. And again, this is where you really start to uncover some interesting behaviors that that schema model can't really show you because it not only shows you how often this is occurring, and how all over the place some of these different execution paths or process behaviors are, but we've got the ability to compare these also from a duration perspective. So what is the average duration when we execute a claim one way versus another way? So if you think of these as process behaviors because it's how the claim was, uh, was acted on, how can we relate these different behaviors to how long it takes us to process? And there's going to be some variability there. You can see there's a, a pretty big difference in some of these different pathways where, you know, maybe things are happening out of order, happening repetitively, and it, it, it directly relates to the amount of time that we're spending processing a claim. Okay. Now, let's just switch back over to that schema. This is a nice linear view on the process. This also shows me how consistently the process is being executed. So if you're looking at this from an automation perspective, the more consistently executed processes are the better candidates most typically because there's less variability, there's less chance that your robot as you build it is going to break because you can kind of pretty assuredly say this is how we do this. So this shows you how consistently the process is done and in this one there's a lot of variability. There's 50 plus different ways. Now as I mentioned this is a good linear view. We can change it and look at it from a schema perspective where you've got things like hey where do, where are decision points? Where are branch is branching happening? Where is rework or looping back? being done. Same analysis, just broken out a bit differently. All right, and as I scroll this, you start to see some really interesting kind of behaviors. You can also compare and contrast these different behaviors, not only from, let's say, a consistency or a compliance and risk perspective, timing, but also now we can bring cost to play here. So what is the average cost to me as a provider when we execute a claim one way versus another way. And if we're really focused on the bottom line here, this is going to be very interesting to us because we're just going to pick out any one of those different pathways that look to be higher cost than the ones relative to it. Okay. Now, before I get into the filtering and how we can use this to scope our analysis, I'll show a few of the other uh, bits of functionality here. So the tool sorts automatically by the top metric, but you see you've got a list of other metrics here available to you. Things like average duration, if you have a business calendar defined, average business duration, number of events, call average and total cost. All right. So it's going to sort high to low based on any of these. If we're really most concerned about our durations, I can choose my duration metric. It's going to sort high to low based on my durations. And now I can see our highest duration and on down the line. Right? And then similarly with cost, I can do the exact same thing. One other bit here that we've got the capability to do is filter based on events happening and or not happening. Okay, So in this case, we've got our coverage confirmation, but I'll say, you know what I'm curious about? How, how many of our claims actually don't have a coverage confirmation? That would be inherently interesting to me. All right. So what I can do is either choose to include timelines only that have this event 
or exclude timelines with this event. So by excluding timelines with this coverage confirmation step, I'm just going to see those that don't have it. And that's very quickly, and you saw us do some filtering there, I get down to the response that here's 1,672 claims that didn't have a coverage confirmation, and let's look at these process behaviors and, and go off and scope our analysis you know, all around this, because that's obviously very, very compelling. So that's some of the uh, some of the different functionality that you got here. Now, as you saw me point out, we've got some higher higher cost type of pathways here. So what I want to do is do so, do another method of filtering by selecting one or more of these. If anything stands out, you can select that pathway. These behaviors, in this case, these are going to be our high cost claims. I apply that as a filter, and now. Again, you're going to see my current working set here be scoped around just the 1,328 claims that exhibited this high cost behavior. Okay, This is my 4.2% of my population. You'll notice I have a filter set here on the left. Along the top, anytime you set a filter, anytime this current set of data is changing, all of these metrics are going to dynamically change with you. Your entire analysis is going to be scoped around the current working set of data that you've got. Okay, And so as this list of filters may grow, you'll see this is going to change and all the metrics and feedback are going to be scoped based around that, that logic. So you'll see my timelines view looks different. I only ha now have my 1,328 high cost claims in my purview and I could go through these if I'd like and do a number of different things uh, over here in the analysis piece. But what I want to quickly show you is the ability to use those attributes to get down to something like root cause analysis. So let's say we've uncovered these high cost claims. This is extremely interesting to us. We want to figure out how it relates to the people that are associated, the type of claim, the location, the piece of technology that was associated in certain ways. We have the ability to do that extremely quickly using this breakdown analysis. All right. And again, this is going to be scoped around just our working set of data, these high cost claims. So I'll select my breakdown view. Now, here, in the, what I did was I selected breakdown. It's already got something popped up here. But how you set this up is by selecting the top left, choosing an event, and selecting the attribute that you want to break it down by. Now, this is important. We need to select an event before we choose an attribute because as these processes go and progress, some of these attributes might change. So something like a state field isn't necessarily going to change over time, but maybe let's imagine we had a status field, right? And it's got the status of the claim at different parts of the process. You would imagine a status field would have different results depending on what event I selected. How far along are we in the process? When the first notice of loss comes in, that status is going to be open or created or something along those lines. But as opposed to maybe when we get down to like a coverage confirmation or even like a processor being assigned, now we're talking about a status field that could be in process. So, you, so this is why you need to select an event based on that attribute. And that's going to be important when you have data coming from multiple data sets. OK, so we, we choose an event in this data set. Everything is is pretty homogenous, so it really doesn't make a difference. But in a real world scenario, it will. Right now, I'm breaking it down by the state that the claims were submitted in. So of our high cost claims that we've got in our current set, how do they break out by the state? It's a pretty even distribution here, right? Nothing too interesting about this. You see, I can quickly toggle between any of the different attributes I've got. How is it by call center? Well, that's interesting. You've got a single call center responsible for quite a large percentage of these high cost claims. That's a bit of a head scratcher. What if I'm even curious about it by agent, person responsible for processing the claim? Well, here you even have something pretty interesting. Carrie Ann McDonough responsible for a large chunk of any one of these different claims, all right, or any one of these high cost claims relative to her peers. Well, maybe it's time to have a conversation with Carrie Ann, right? So the idea here, let's segment and find interesting things that are happening within our, in our data set, in this case by cost, and then drill in and start to understand how it relates to these other attribute fields. This way we can make it actionable. 
I know who to go speak with. I know what business unit I need to go, you know, focus my efforts on on uh, training. In this case, with Carrie Ann, maybe prior to going and having that conversation, I'm curious exactly what Carrie Ann's been working on. I can select any one of these attributes. I can apply them as a filter. Now you see I've got two filters set here. I've got a 535 or 1.7% of my overall population in my working set. Now I'm focused just in on those claims that Carrie Ann was the, uh, was the agent for. Right? And now, maybe prior to going and having that conversation, I scroll through a few and take a sampling to better inform myself as to maybe how I can help. All right, But that's how you can use this filtering mechanism to get down to interesting subsets of data and then try to draw some correlational uh, root cause analysis based on you know, who, what, when, types, all these, all these different kinds of, of factors.